Hello viewers, Super GT here. Today we're going to be jumping into a race which I've been really looking forward to doing for quite a while. It's Group 3, as you can see, we're going to go with the Audi R8 around Spa. Now, check this out. We're actually going to be racing against the penalty system. Let's hope that one doesn't end badly. Now, I do want to first off say lots of love in the comments when I join this lobby. So thank you to all, all those guys and thank you to everyone who's watching for, for watching, yeah, and for coming back for more. Maybe it's your first time, I don't know. Now, we're gonna jump into qualifying. It's a nine lap race, but we first off begin, of course, with the five laps, sorry, five minutes of qualifying. Now, it's a fairly long track, some long straights. Tried, therefore, to get myself into the slipstream of the car in front, which should be worth a couple of tenths around a circuit of this magnitude. Okay, into first corner, La Source hairpin. Crucial exit here, as you're flat out for quite a while. That's if you can take radio on flat out, which is here. Let's have a look. We've got to take a lot of the road on the left. Is there going to be a lift? No sign of a lift. Flat out through there. The penalty system has left the room. I don't know if you saw that. I don't know if you saw that. But um, is, that a good, is that a good thing? It's kind of funny. That's actually very relevant because there are actually no penalties in this game at the moment, for contact at least. But for track limits, well, they're still about. You're still going to get penalties for violating track limits. Uh, speaking of that, guy in the lead there, or guy at the front at least, makes a big mistake. Puon goes very wide. And we catch up with Zonda Hernan 14. And... It's never a good thing to catch up with Zonda Hearn and 14 on any qualifying lap because you're going to get slowed down slightly. We are going to tuck into the slipstream, pull out to the right-hand side. Hopefully we can get clear of this driver before we get to Blanchemont, which is this fast left-hander, which I just cut out of the footage quite conveniently. Uh, into the final chicane. It seems like a decent lap so far. We were held up slightly at points, but let's see if it's a, a decent time. 18.5 or 2 minutes 18.5 we go again for a second lap the tyre wear was actually quite low in this race so you could afford to go again that's exactly what we're doing and at this point we are slightly up let's see if we can go for a faster lap it's going to be a 218.3 so a slight improvement on our second lap and it's going to be good enough for second as you can see so that's a, that's a decent little session there I'll take that the leader dipping into the 17s and actually yeah let's just confirm that the penalty system is no longer in the room you can't see him there but with that said let us jump into the race shall we now the crucial thing here as you can see is that we are on a grid start rather than a rolling start which is a good thing around spa because the rolling starts are absolutely awful because you will get spread out around the final chicane but on a grid start, everything's a bit more compact and it's a lot more fun. So I'm looking forward to this one. Going for one traction control. Holding the brake, releasing the brake as the lights go out and away you go. Back to zero traction control. And then it's a matter of trying to have a good run through this first corner. We're going to go wide because we're on the outside. The guy on the inside there in third has a bit of a moment. And unfortunately, we, we make contact and I'm wide. Go down to fifth. We're going to have to tuck into the slipstream of the Porsche here. So not many people opting for a car that isn't the Audi R8. But we've got a couple of Porsches in here, I think, and maybe a couple of Mercedes. Very wide through a Rouge Radion. And that is really courtesy of having very cold tyres here on the first lap. And we're going uh, to get ourselves a 0.5 second penalty. So this start, the start of this race, absolutely shocking gone down from second down to fifth and we got ourselves a penalty even though the penalty system left the room earlier i mean how how have we managed that so we're gonna have to recover this race and it's going to take a fair old amount of time to do that nine laps around spa you're looking at about 20 minutes 21 minutes of racing so it's not over just yet the leader is only 1.3 seconds ahead and with slipstream Things can remain very close for a long time. It's very hard to escape the toe. Canadian driver there going very wide through this corner. It's going to nip up the inside. And unfortunately, 
that means we are just outside of the slipstream range as we come through here. So in this situation, often you're relying on the car in front to stay within the slipstream. We've lost the slipstream now, and therefore I'm going to be vulnerable coming into the final chicane in just a moment's time. So even though I've got a penalty, I'm going to keep the car to the right-hand side here just to defend the position. And then the guy behind can't quite do anything about that. You can see just how much we gain on the brakes there as the top three just battling on the way into the final corner. Uh, so we're back in the slipstream range already. That's good news. So you're just hoping the guy behind doesn't go for a lunge here into the first corner. And he doesn't, thankfully. Playing it quite sensibly. All gets a bit choked up there on the apex of La Source. But we're going to have to serve our penalty here. Get through Radion, through Eau Rouge. Coming up to the penalty line here, which is in the middle of the Kemmel Strait. And we're going to lose a little bit of time here, of course. Go down to fourth gear. That was a big mistake. Should have stayed in fifth. But thankfully, yes, we do serve that penalty, but uh, we don't actually lose too much time. We're still on the back of this group, so that's a good thing. So we're still definitely within earshot of the leader, and we're still in with a shout of trying to salvage this race. This driver goes a bit of a mistake on the exit of Lake Coombe chicane, and we're going to throw up the inside down into, I believe it's a rivage. And... Um, down the hill then in fourth just need to make sure we have a good sector here we are within a tenth of being dropped here uh, out of slipstream range so we've got to make sure that we have a good little sector to round out the mid sector of this lap down into Lafania chicane long right into a long left and actually I think we've we've definitely gained on the guy in front here the Audi R8 that's why this car is so good through this middle sector very good at I mean he's good at turning and um, it might not have the straight line speed through sector one and three but it's very very capable through sector two which is mostly long sweeping corners so that's why this car really does excel on this track particularly and why most people have chosen it for this race now we get another penalty there this was a really really frustrating experience at this point in time that one was for just running slightly too wide on the entry to Blanchemont. So I went all four wheels beyond the line. A bit silly, but you do need to take quite a lot of extra road on the way in just to make sure the corner is flat out. So this was a bit of a rusty experience, a rusty performance, if you like, because this was, at my, this was my first race here. So really I'm just learning the race for the first time and really getting acquainted with our good friend, the penalty system. And even despite all of those things, we are still not too far away from the lead. The leader's less than two seconds ahead. He's well within sight, still making some mistakes there. That was not a good line through that corner, but we're still with a chance. Now, the thing I was worried about here is that the leader was actually beginning to pull away and second just couldn't quite cope with that pace. So I need to get through this, this group here as quickly as possible so that I can start beginning to possibly reel in the leader. Now, it's going to be quite hard because, well, I'm not going to be able to do it straight away because the guy in second now is just beginning to edge slightly clear. But we do have a very good overtaking opportunity coming up. This is Blanchemont. Make sure we don't run our, all of our wheels wide there. So... We're going to look for the move, pull out to the right-hand side, on the brakes, re-release re the brakes just to make sure we get the inside. It doesn't quite work out. We're still side-by-side side here. And unfortunately, on the exit, it means we get run slightly wide onto the AstroTurf, losing crucial momentum, re really, really frustrating. And to compound that, we're going to get overtaken here into the first corner. Yeah, very frustrating. Um, drinking game for the word <laughs> frustrated those who wish to get rather drunk now that was kind of an annoying move as now we're just gonna slipstream back past him probably through through Radion, top of the hill don't get another penalty there and we have now i'm sure that i mean this was frustrating for me it's probably probably worse for you watching but uh, we're gonna stick behind here and i'm just gonna say right okay mate i'll work with you Let's, let's go together, but then he completely bottles this corner, the breaking entry, anyway. 
and we just need to try and catch up really salvage this race because this the whole idea of this video really is to kind of show you the difference between two races i'm going to show you another race after this and this first race is a very good example of how you can actually lose a race on the first lap they say that you can't win a race on the first lap in many ways you can in many ways you can but you can definitely lose a race on the first lap and i think this is a prime example of that so we're going to bump him here and let him know i'm willing to work with you mate i'm willing to work with you to catch up let's do it let's stop messing about overtaking each other but he could, he's going to go for a very late move here on the canadian contact there canadian not happy going to come back at him boom thank you very much for that guys i'm just going to jump in uh, up into third place and whilst they continue their hostilities down the main straight into turn one we, uh, we're going to pull clear of them both. So we're actually already at slipstream range for the pair of them. Just shows you. Look at that. 1.2, 1.3 seconds ahead. Already. Courtesy of their fighting. We serve the penalty. And because of their fighting, they're not quite close enough. So this is why you do have to... If you're going to fight, make sure it's towards the end of the race. Otherwise, you're just going to lose so much time and potential positions if you do it too early in the race. So... I managed to reel in this guy in second. This was pretty much the first point in the race where I was kind of in clear air without anyone to directly fight against. And therefore, I was able to get my head down and improve my lap times. And come through Radion, not get a penalty this time about. So the tyres just beginning to wear out. Um, although, combine that with the lesser fuel and the car was pretty much at its fastest by about midpoint maybe two thirds into this race so we're on for a purple lap here you can see i'm definitely gaining on josh binelli here who's in second uh, the leader by this point dhr uh, DR, drh boost about four seconds ahead and therefore realistically perhaps too far away to for me to win this race but um Getting very close now to Josh. Taking a nice line through here. You have to commit early to that corner. Be brave on the exit. You don't want to touch the Astro, but uh, he's not going to really fight this one. So he keeps it to the right. We're going to go up the inside and move up into second. So I'm finally, after, what, 13 minutes of, of, of racing, lap six, near the end of lap six, I'm back to where I started. That just shows you how long it takes. If you lose positions at the beginning... It really just compounds everything very badly for you and it takes a lot longer to recover that time. So you can lose positions very quickly at the beginning. Set the fastest lap of the race there. You can lose positions very quickly at the beginning, you know, within a couple of seconds, as we did on this corner on lap one. But then it takes so long for you to recover that. It can take a lot longer. So you have to be very wary of that. By the end of the race, I got to within three seconds of the leader. I was catching... And I set the faster lap. I was gaining on the leader. It's just frustrating that that one little bit of contact on the first lap resulted in me going down to fifth and it took so long to then catch back up, getting the penalties, making mistakes. Whereas if I just got through that first corner in second, it might have been a very different story. But there we go. Finishing second. It was a solid recovery. Um, but I think it should have been a win, really, based on the pace that we had. So we're going to jump back in and go for another race. Again in the Audi R8. Uh, this time, um, this, this is going to uh, highlight some subtle differences between that first race and this one. Because in this one, our qualifying is going to be slightly better. So let's take a look at it. Now, the first mistake I make, actually, is getting a little bit too close too early to the car in front in a qualifying lap. In, in fact, I have to lift off here which is obviously not what you want to do on a qualifying lap and uh, on, on any of the straights. But I do get a better exit here, so I'm going to go past this guy anyway. Uh, Joker there having a bit of an accident. So that's two people we're going to be quicker than, at least on this lap. If you go past anyone on your, on your qualifying lap, you know you're going to be quicker than them. Quite simple, really. And now as a second objective, really, is to try to catch up with nine tyres 
the guy in front by the third sector and hopefully he can give us a nice tow up the back straight and by the beginning of sector three which we're at now then you can see i very much have caught up with him so we're going to get into the slipstream we're going to gain a couple of car lengths for free as you can see we're going to slowly reel our way in that would not have been possible without the tow we're going to get slightly stuck here through Blanchemont and it is a slight distraction and he's going to get a penalty and peel to the rails wasn't sure which side to go luckily very luckily I don't go into the back of him and uh, our communication was just about good enough there as you move to the right and we can just go and take the normal racing line let's see what our time is it's 2.18.1 so that's two tenths quicker than our first race so that's a good thing we've gone we've gone faster I think in these FIA races when you've got multiple slots that you can enter you should always aim to really go quicker each time as you learn the car learn the track a bit better we get penalty that time around so we weren't going to go quicker on the second lap although it was quite a consistent lap 218.4 but look at that small differences we end up on pole position this time if I had done my lap from the first race I would have been second now interestingly driver in second is driving the Mercedes so we've got two different cars in the front row here Audi and Mercedes now let's take a look at this this race start in the first race in the first race we started second and we got caught up in an incident went down to fifth now this time around from pole position we can control the inside get on the brakes nice and early make sure we hit the apex the guy in second drops down into fourth fifth he drops down to sixth place he drops down to sixth place so he's had a very similar start to me i've already broken the slipstream so this is a very good opportunity just to get your head down have a good lap and just try to pull away don't get a penalty don't do anything silly like that and already we are beginning to streak clear so on this opening lap as you see some penalties are developing behind all we've got to do really is quite simple let's just not do any silly mistakes to get your head down set a nice lap and open up this gap as early as possible now we did say earlier that you can't perhaps win a race on lap one but i think in many ways you can if you get it dead right and everyone else gets it dead wrong which many of the guys behind are because they're fighting way too much the gap is already two seconds already two and a half seconds in fact so this is a very sizable margin for us to play with for the, re for the remainder of the race. So dropping down the hill towards Puom, solid gap, not looking behind, just taking the corners as we know best. And uh, the tyres by this point beginning just to get up to temperature. And into the final corner, we're already three seconds ahead. Three seconds. That is a very good gap to have. Look at that. Three and a half seconds, in fact, as we cross the line end lap one and, and the guys behind have got some penalties let's take a look at the guy in second and how his lap developed started second went deep into the first corner just braked a little bit too late as he came back there was contact with this guy and he just lost some crucial momentum traction on the astroturf and that dropped him down to six and that was a really similar start to what i had in the first race Starting second, dropping down a couple of positions. And we can see here, though, that this guy managed to recover the positions a lot quicker. So he's already back to fourth. So there's a bit of an incident here between second and third as they uh, make contact on the entry to Lake Coombe. He wasn't quite able to capitalise here down the hill. But the two drivers in front, both with penalties at this point, and the one behind, in fact. So lots of penalties, lots of fighting, and you can see just how easily this is for me easy for me i can just pull away quite quite easily minimal effort as these guys just begin to fight way too much so if anything you need to be very very careful with fighting too much too soon you need to ideally just like slip into position and just give yourself a chance for the long term and then i think the leader uh, sorry second place there makes a mistake drifts wide onto the astro and by this point He's back, and you see just how far away we've got. By the time he gets it back into second, I'm already about three and a half seconds up the road. And that is a very good gap. Now, because of how big that gap was, I decided to set myself a bit of a challenge 
and just try to stay or try to get the gap above four seconds by the end of the race so by the end of lap two the gap was four seconds so i thought okay well it looks like we're going to win this race as long as i don't make any glaring errors so the main thing i've got to do really is just try and keep this guy at bay you, you never know he could still be a lot quicker than me by the end of lap uh, three setting a quick lap going quicker again on lap four and um, this is the guy in second getting down into the mid 19s by the end of lap five he went down to a 19-0 which basically matched my fastest lap so this guy was quick and he wasn't um, he wasn't a slouch at all and perhaps like me in the first race it, honestly the, the, the similarities between these two races are quite striking if he had been in second place on the end of the first lap, he would have had a very good chance of winning this race. Um, but unfortunately for him, just that one incident on the first corner on the first lap put him way far down, way too far down the order to really so, uh, mount a proper challenge. So the gap still four seconds by this point, and I wanted desperately to finish above four seconds ahead of him. Um, it didn't really matter. I mean, as long as you win the race, it doesn't really matter what the gap is but um, it's just like a private little challenge I set myself. But it just shows you how close we were matched. And if we had been nose to tail for the race, I think it would have been a very, very close one to call because our pace was basically the same. Basically the same. And um, it would have been a good battle. But sometimes you've just got to take the easy victory, and I'm not complaining at all. Into the final chicane then. Gap 4.3 at this point. We're going to try and set all of our lap times below a 2.20. So all lap times so far, 2.19 apart from lap one. Can we exclude that? And it's a 2.99. So all of our laps below 2.20. Quite happy with that. Sub 21 minutes race time. And then ultimately, he comes through to finish four and a half seconds behind us. So very cl very fine margins between what you can what you can do to win a race and therefore to finish second. And uh, both of those races that I showed you there kind of mirror images of each other um i was quite curious as to where donald bump started his race because he finished fourth turns out he started 19th and i wanted to take a look at this for those interested so donald in retirement from politics obviously getting into the gran turismo scene now he had a really good uh, start here you see that gaining quite a few positions uh, so let's just take a look at this guy's this this guy's race quickly. See how he made his way from 19th to 4th. That was kind of a weird incident. That guy just kind of got pinned against the wall and got ghosted out. Uh, but already, Donald Bump up five positions to 14th. Now he looked for a very risky move here, just making the space, moving up to 13th while completing the move into the braking zone here and getting 13th position. And just look at the size of the gap. Uh, sorry, look at the size of the group up in front. Uh, so a very close race, this one, in the mid-pack. So he parks it nicely on the apex, moves up into 12th. Quite a few penalties up in front, which are served there. He doesn't actually manage to gain on any of them coming into the braking zone. No, he doesn't. So still 12th at this point. Oh, who's that? ATK coming back. And uh, into the final chicane. Look at this move around the outside. TPC Raccoon there just caught napping and gets passed by the Donald uh, up into up into 11th by this point. And uh, what's going to happen here? We're going to get a nice slipstream move against the Mercedes down the back straight, down the Kemmel. He's going to look for the move, put himself up the inside. It's, it's a solid move, that. Up into the top 10. End of lap number three. Where's he going to go here? Go to the inside. Double move, possibly. Get to the apex first. There is some contact, but he's through. Double move up into eighth. Okay. Not too bad so far. Guy will lap me again in the Heineken Porsche. He's going to get overtaken into the braking zone of Lekoum. And uh, Donald Bump. Oh, there's a bit of a bump there. Moves up into seventh. Fifth and sixth battling here. And... What's going to happen here? Is he going to go for another double move? Let's take, let's take a look into the first corner. Cross the line to end lap number six. Two thirds of the race done. Going to go for the double move. Park it on the apex. Guy on the outside comes flying around. Very close racing. Good battling that. 
And he's just going to back off here slightly, I think. And then look for the move down the straight instead. Oh my goodness, look at this. They're going to go three abreast down the Kemmel straight. Bit of contact, bit of bumping between the three of them. It's a drag race. Who is going to come out on top? Looks like Donald's got the upper hand here. And he's going to move up into fifth. Okay, and then he's got one more move to try to make up against Dusty CCSR. This is the beginning of lap number nine. This is the beginning of the final sector of lap number nine. There's a yellow flag. I think that's a back marker. Is he? Oh, Dusty making a very big hash of that corner, losing lots of momentum. And Donald Bump, uh, Donald Bump moves up into, into fourth place. I think that was a good little uh, scything through the pack. And I don't think he was going to make much more progress than that. So that was a, that was a good, that was a good little performance there. Um, but that is the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching, as ever. If you're not subbed to the channel, get yourself subscribed. Why not? But um, that's all for me. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. Goodbye.